You're watching 3 Pound Fishing, sponsored by these great companies. Hey folks, back on the water, and today we're going to try multiple ways to catch crappie. Not only are we going to cast with double jigs, but we're also going to vertical jig, but then we're also going to do a pendulum method of actually tossing it out there, letting it swing back to us, just so that we don't disrupt these fish. You're going to want to use that technique, folks, when the fish are just not that deep. And it's a great way to start on any particular pile, so not to disturb them. So please do me a favor and subscribe, and I appreciate you watching. That's a good fish, folks. Mixing it up today. That's going to be the name of the episode. You know, we're going to start on brush piles. We caught a really good black nose, and now we're just throwing a electric chicken. That's a slab right there. Just adjusting. Looks like it even still has eggs. That's a good fish. I'm just going with your classic double rig here with uh, two electric chickens just because I know this particular spot they for some reason like electric chicken uh, yellowhead and I've got a big separation with loop knots maybe about two feet so we're really trying to have some variability in terms of the depths of these uh, jig heads these jigs um, I am using the live scope from the standpoint of I'm trying to locate the depth of these fish and right now they're pretty deep so I'm just letting it fall 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 and then a slow retrieval. It is early in the morning, by the way. That's why I'm talking so slow. But I am excited about catching good fish, that's for sure. Jig head sizes are pretty small right now. I got actually two one sixteenth ounce heads, so they're falling, they're falling pretty slow. Like a subtle bite. It really is a subtle bite. But they like that electric chicken here, and you don't have to use minnows for some reason. That's a good fish. I'm gonna let it go though. This one jig right here has about, this bottom jig has about a number six hook on it. So it's like probably too small. Now I'm using the slime line here, the ultra, not the ultra clear, but the professional grade, very high viz line. It's a eight pound actually, which is not too bad to cast. It probably could get away with six. I'm not a fan of going to the four and the two and the play with that stuff. I know some people are, but um, Six is fine, or eight's fine with me when I cast, as long as I'm, you know, casting double jigs, have some weight to them. My ten footers right now, and I'll show that to you when we get back. When we get back on the piles, I'll show you what I'm using. Um, I've kind of totally mixed it up now. I've got a mixture of ten pound, and then I have an eight pound leader that's clear. I just kept seeing things on the live scope that. Would, would spook the fish. It seems like they wanted the minnow and then they would turn a, turn around and I was like, you know, so I'm mixing some things up trying to see what it is. You've got to love an early morning, especially one with very little wind. I mean, everybody takes advantage of it before any of the boats get out there. So yeah, very nice, peaceful and quiet. Now on this day, we definitely try multiple ways to catch crappie. And it's not because we were struggling one way or another. It's just sometimes you just want to mix it up to try different techniques. I mean, later this season, we're going to be doing crankbaits, um, spider rigging, of course, something that we've done before, but we're going to do it in the summertime and casting. So all great techniques to catch crappie. Just 
just a little tick. You pay attention to that little tick, and you don't think you actually have one on, but there's a fish on there. That's a small fish right there. But all it is is a little dinky tick, and then sometimes they just take it and it feels like a weight. But just slow retrieval with just a baby shad. So today we've got another hot day, 85 degrees, water temperature is sitting right again. We're at 77 degrees and the sun's not even up. Um, so the water temperature's definitely climbing quickly with these warmer temperatures. 85 degrees today, smoking hot. Definitely for, uh, for late May. We're gonna do a little bit of pile fishing, which I love, my favorite. Guided trips this year, this summer, if you wanna get on the piles, we will smoke them, I'm telling you, it's just a lot of fun. Um, but then also today, we're just doing a little, some casting, so. That one you could barely feel. Small fish again. This was the problem with this spot last year. I came here and I caught a bunch of smalls, but we did have one good one off here. I think they're mixed in there. It's just fun to, you know, change techniques up. I mean, you don't want to you get bored if all you're doing is one, one way, I think. You want to cast, curly tails, baby shad, go on vertically jig. Uh, I always like mixing it up with the plastics and the minnows. I like going to old piles old piles that I've had that I haven't fished for a while. Um, all right, before we get started, let me just show you that setup. Um, again, I've got 10 pound of high vis, and that way I can watch the line when it's above the water, but my leaders now are made up of this number three clasp, ball swivel, a number seven split shot, and then a number four hook, and this is an eight pound ultra clear. So I don't have to worry about worrying that the line is what why it was spooking the fish down there. I'm watching a lot of it on live scope and I notice those fish going straight for the minnow and then stopping sometimes. And I'm like, well, what could that be? So I'm just trying to get rid of this. Now, again, we talked about markers for live scope so you can identify those fish or where you're located on live scope. So I've got my split shot as a marker. I'm obviously gonna have my minnow as a marker, but I'm also gonna have this clasp, which is just as big essentially as this number seven uh, split shot. With, our, with those markers. Those markers started to move with the fish, and then boom, fish. It's a good little eater. Didn't feel the bite at all. Amazing. Good looking fish there. It now guided trips 2019 let's do it let's put them in the bucket right there so I've identified that there are fish on this pile and they're still 25 feet away from me so I'm getting prepped before I go up there I don't want to spook them and not be completely prepared. I'm also getting the I'm also getting the active captain fired up.
<laughs> That's a good fish, folks. All right. Good solid eater anyway. Boy, good solid eater right there. So I backed off the pile, hit that spot lock, and it, and it keeps us right there so we haven't lost. I can still see it on my live scope. I'm doing is staying back about six foot and I'm pendulum them, throwing them out there, let them swing right back to me, and that way I'm staying off that pile. These fish are about 12 foot. I probably can get right on top of them for sure, but a good way to start on any pile is to let it pendulum back, and that way you can stay a little bit more stealthy. That's a good fish right there. That's the best of the day so far. Right there, that's, that's a slab. That's every bit of a 12 inch. Right, 12 and a half. You gotta love it! <laughs> it just doesn't get any better, folks. It really doesn't. I mean, rush pile fishing, and now with this new technology, um, I won't even just say, and it's really a combination of, of side imaging, being able to identify those structures too. So, I'm a big believer in hummingbird electronics, helixes. Um, Couple that with the live scope. Deadly combination. You saw that episode. Um, just doesn't get any better. And, and then you put the old tracks into it. Um, all these toys, they cost money. No doubt about it, you can go out and you can catch fish with none of this stuff. But boy, I, I'm just a technology type of guy and I like experiencing it. So I do, and I like sharing that information with everybody. So Check out the new merch. This is just one of the hats. There's a lot of hats coming out. I've got a couple of them already, but I'll let you go to 3poundfishing.com and check it out. I'm also going to be doing the Teespring. Uh, you'll see right below these videos here shortly where you can order the, the logo on pretty much any color shirt that you want. Um, but the hats, the specialty hats that I'm doing, the specialty hoods that I'm doing, those will be offered on my website only. So Teespring, certainly take advantage of that. That's really nice and convenient. I like that. Um, but then if you wanna go to my website, you'll see items like this um, that you won't see on Teespring, so. So I wanted to take a break and just kind of show you guys a little bit about the structure that I was fishing right here. Now this is obviously a branch, a tree actually, and you can see how, if you look through this structure, how these fish hide in corners of the tree, whether it's a branch coming up, there are like two or three just crunched down in like a corner. So very difficult to actually put the middle in front of them. So you got to kind of get them to come out somehow. But just check out this image. It's about a minute worth of, of film where these fish, and you really get an idea of how they hide within structure.
there's about four of them on top of this pile. It's a small little pile, which is kind of cool to see, but there's at least four good eaters right there. That's 11 and a half. This is a pile that has just got tons of fish around it now. I don't know if we've created a fishing frenzy right here, but they're just all over now down here. I've got the, I've got the, the, cat, the active captain program going now so you guys can see this. Hopefully I'll be showing it up here on the screen. right back to me all right folks with that we're going to be headed out back off the lake and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on our next episode so in this episode i tried to just throw a little bit less music just to see what kind of feedback i would get and uh, i do appreciate you watching i appreciate all the comments and um, truly i'm out there enjoying a passion of mine and Three pound fishing, that's what it's about. It's about a passion for crappie fishing. Every night I go to bed thinking about crappie fishing. And if you do that as well, you found your home because that's what three pound fishing is all about. Thanks, folks.